Welcome to my channel. This video will be about me updating my palette, just talking about the small selection of palettes I do, do have, and also a few tips here or there. I um, Feel free to skip to whatever part you want. I do ramble a little bit in this, but I try to keep it short and on topic entirely. So enjoy! Okay, welcome uh, to the video. Welcome to a new video. Anyway, um, so this is a video uh, about just updating my palette. Nothing too fancy, nothing too crazy. Um, yeah, I have actually had this Daniel Smith palette for a year now or something like that. I will probably put the dates on and how long. It just feels like it's been a year. And this is actually built up of multiple Daniel Smith palettes plus a few paints. So originally, for Daniel Smith, I bought this color, uh, Quinn, oh, which one is it? Quinn Rose and Thalo Blue, a uh, green shade, which I believe is right there. Um, to kind of try it out, I've never had like professional grade paints prior to a year and a half ago or anything like that, so hence why I actually um, went and upgraded, because originally, now, they're, originally they were, were just Windsor & Newton, all these colors, Windsor and uh, Windsor & Newton Cotman set, so it was like a student grade set, and I don't even remember how much I paid for that one, but it was, it was uh, years and years ago, maybe like six years ago or something, or maybe even around university time, just because prior to that I had the crappiest um, paints ever when it comes to watercolor like you know you like i have always had cheaper acrylics and other paints but for some reason the watercolor paints themselves they were cheap and chalky like back 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 in my day when i was a kid um <laughs> i um yeah there wasn't like good cheap student grade watercolors like there is now like i i know that seeing on amazon it's just like flooded with like cheaper paints student grade ones that are actually really nice to use but um, I kind of was going for, you know, because I've already gone through the student grade stuff and, you know, I was just looking for an upgrade a year and a half ago just because, like, I, watercolor is something I always loved. Um, I always wanted to be better at it. Like, as a kid, I remember that was, like, the one medium that, I don't know, fascinated me. And so, hence why I just decided for, if I was going to go professional grade, it was going to be for watercolor. Um, yeah, I, I mean... Yeah, because acrylic paints, I mean, even if you use the cheaper stuff, I find it's like, acrylic is plastic. I mean, I, I know that there are much better acrylic paints, so no shade to anybody who's like, you know, professional artist and uses much fancier and nicer acryl acrylics than I do. Um, but yeah, I just go with like, I think Liquitex, but yeah. Anyway, that's uh, going on a acrylic tangent. Also, I did recently buy a Rosa Gallery one just because I was looking to upgrade my travel set because I had a very, very cheap... It was a gift. It was, it was it was great. I liked the colors. The only problem was it was kind of like missing a few darker colors just because. Here, I'll uh, demonstrate. I decided not decided not to pause this video and just keep going at it and see how long it takes. So I. Um, yeah, so I'm re I actually delegated the pa my travel set to here, and this is just turning into a very watercolor. So that's original, and so very nice poppy colors. They kind of just don't turn out this poppy on like the this Rodea and other papers. So hence why I kind of went with uh, that. So those are like maximum all the watercolors I have accumulated. Like I said, I, I like the Rosa Gallery ones just because. There are bigger wells and I just found for like travel it's just it's nicer to have the bigger wells like I get very messy and yeah so half of the Rosa Gallery ones are in the Rosa Gallery set and then I just kind of mishmashed actually a couple of I did have like a oh god what is it called because in the store I was in I don't think they had Daniel Smith so I just got like a this is the only horror damn the Schmincke ones I have. I know these are crazy expensive, but like, yeah. So <laughs> I got the lemon yellow because I just needed like a professional grade lemon yellow at the time. So when I had 
phthalo blue and then the quinn rose and that as just like the three extra thing that i kind of rocked with and yeah so back to daniel smith crazy tangent right um yeah so then there was an, an imagination set where from here so moon glow rose of ultramarine lavender wisteria and i believe there was oh yeah and shadow violet and serpentine green those all came in one set and then this this palette itself is like a there was 12 color set or something but like and then it had like 12 extra wells and stuff so that's kind of how i built up this entire daniel smith palette kind of quickly and i kind of went this route instead of picking tubes just because i figured it would be a cheaper way to figure out what colors i want plus getting like classic staples like you know um uh, yellow ochre and burnt sienna and stuff like that. I, there was like a few colors and the, um, in this way I didn't actually repeat any to be honest. I actually discovered I really like um, Quinn Pink versus Quinn Rose in, in my use case. Um, I, I just felt like I was actually more versatile and I just liked it when I was painting skin tones more like it was um, it was not as harsh. And then these two also um, I found I did not like the cerulean blue in this palette or the ultramarine like I you can tell like I barely touched this one I only used it for like uh, a tropical painting I did and I actually hated the cerulean blue I felt, felt like it was very weak like the entire time like it's weird because it doesn't seem like it's weak and every time I look at it here or like swatch it out it's fine but when I go to do a painting I was just so disappointed and plus like somehow I, it just felt kind of dark too in some ways like I wanted like a lighter like I for some reason in my head I pictured cerulean blue to be a lighter blue but not with white in it or anything so what I ended up doing is when I did uh, another update to my palette I got cobalt blue violet manganese blue nova but by whole bean because I found I really liked um, online somebody had swatched and had a picture of it I thought this was a very pretty blue like this is kind of like ideal sky blue I just didn't want to get like a whole set of like Holbein or Holbein I don't know but yeah but sorry for pronunciation if I'm <laughs> however you pronounce it um, this uh, I didn't want to get like a full set of this unless I actually end up going to Japan then I'm gonna go crazy and probably buy like a whole set and it's probably gonna be cheaper if I actually went to Japan and bought it but yeah so I only got like a tiny little 5ml tube it was in stock and that's what I got and I really like it for skies I used it on my latest like Valkyrie painting like if, if you saw that that whole sky is painted, painted with that and I just like it because it's not it doesn't feel too it's like pastel but not like oh it's a watercolor mix with white which is where I'm coming into um, my issue <laughs> with why I'm like updating my palette a bit and then I chose these two colors, um, Nap Maroon, I'm not gonna try and pronounce that because I think I've tried a million times and yeah, stumble over my words like 10,000 times, and Thalo Turquoise, and yes, I know, you probably can't read my writing, it's terrible, but yeah. Um, I just wanted kind of more turquoise green, I guess, because I don't have like a cool dark green in this palette at all, so I figured I kind of will just go with this because I don't mind mixing so much certain colors, like dark greens I don't use anyway. So it's not like a convenience color I need. So in terms of convenience colors, I have everything. Like this is one of the biggest colors I really wanted just for beach scenes. Cause when I was in Dominican and painting um, the, the sand, I had a weird time trying to figure out. I'm like, how, like, I don't think I even had white with me. Yeah, I didn't even have any white paint with me, like any white watercolor or anything. Um, uh, the, 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 you know, the student grade set, I think it came with white, but I didn't pour it in just cause yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, when I saw Buff Titanium in this palette, this is like, I feel like this is like one of the number one reasons why I bought the 12 set of, uh, which you can buy in my art store, um, online. And there was a, yeah, cause there was like two different versions and one of them had like a repeat of the Imagination plus a few extra colors, but yeah. So now, the Imagination set, or I believe that's what it's called, I, uh, which I bought off of Amazon. Um, I, plus that and Quinn Rose and Thalo Blue and a Lemon Yellow, which was, um, Schminka Horadam. That was basically what I had for a while, I think for at least several months, before I added to any more, um, Daniel Smith colors. Now, I mostly just did washes in my sketchbook, and that was fine, and, and all, um, uh, and so it's... 
you know, I would do washes with them and this is kind of when I, I had the laminated palette. I know uh, that one has actually a lot of gouache in it. Uh, I believe that one also has a mix of like gouache and watercolor. That one could be markers and stuff, but this is like an ideal example of <laughs> how uh, I did it just with the washes. So it was, um, I think that might actually be the gouache, but anyway, neither here nor there. So as I kind of continued on doing more detailed work, I guess, or de more layers, you know, with watercolor, you kind of like mix more, you add more layers. I found if I started adding like more colors, like I, I don't know where that piece is, but I think I literally ruined it because it started looking too muddy and just not the way I wanted. Because uh, lavender and wisteria, I believe, have white mixed into them. But you can kind of tell, right? They're very pastel-y, right? You can, when you're looking at like watercolor wells or, um, are they wells? I can't remember what they're called. But yeah, um, you kind of can tell when something looks too pastel-y, they probably has like mixed white in them, which um, I learned a lot about watercolors through like, I think um, uh, the frugal, Lindsay the Frugal Crafter and a lot of YouTubers. Um, talking about it and I actually found that um, learning about the pigments kind of really helped me also do um, color theory better than when I was messing around digitally for years like yeah so anyway um, to get to my point why I'm updating my palette is these two colors I kept getting super frustrated with the last year so I kind of want to replace kind of wanted to replace them and with a different colors that I felt like I was needing more of like I feel like I would still use this but at the same time if I water down a uh, rose of ultramarine or like do some more mixing or if I'm just like if I'm just doing basic washes I would still keep these I'm not throwing them away obviously it's just for this palette that I keep grabbing and I use it's not necessarily um working and I and I found I needed additional colors so I then um uh, but I actually bought refills too. So two of these colors are actually just refills because um, I found I loved Rose of Ultramarine. I think that's yeah, Rose of Ultramarine and Moon Glow. Like when I first heard of Moon Glow, I thought it was like such an overrated color, but here I am really loving it. I'm gonna focus here. So these two are just complete refills essentially. And they're like, the only reason I bought them without actually really running out of them is mostly like FOMO because um, the stock, at least online for everywhere, felt like it kept going out and I was panicking thinking, oh, there's no more stock of these colors. They're never gonna exist anymore or something. Even though I, I don't think I've heard of any of these colors being discontinued at all. So like when I went to my local art store to actually buy them, or local, I went all the way downtown. Um, <laughs> they, um, they had actually like at least six tubes of these and I just thought it was kind of funny because the same art store had it completely out of stock and other art stores just had it completely out of stock. I'm like thinking, I'm like, I swear the stock in stores is fine, but I guess because it comes from warehouses and not the stores themselves, that must be what's happening. So yeah, I two refills just in case, you know, I don't know, apocalypse happens, at least I'll have moon glow. That's, that's all that matters. Screw food or water, as long as I have moon glow, it's good. <laughs> And then, um, so I actually got, um, I, I found that I didn't really have any black and I don't like using black watercolor. Like I'll use black ink for the lines and stuff, but if I'm mixing colors, I just, I don't like mixing black cause that's kind of how my art teachers always taught me just not to mix black in, in with the, sh when you're, um, creating darker shades. And I thought indigo would be a great addition because I love the, um, Rosa Gallery indigo. Because originally I was going to get Payne's Great, right? Like the classic staple, but I kind of fell in love with Indigo instead. So yeah, there's that. And then I decided to just go with a very... Focus. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure if that's going to focus or not, but yeah. So I went I went with a very um, a much smaller tube than I usually do because I'm always like, YOLO, I'm going to get a 15ml tube. I know, it's, it's insane. Shopaholic problems. Um, I, um, yeah, so I just went, of, went with a 5ml because I really love the idea of this color and to be honest, I have used it, it's just, yeah, I, um, I wanted to just get like a smaller sample of it just because I wasn't even sure which one, like I was first a little bit sketch on getting a cobalt because, you know, cobalt, like any colors that have kind of warnings on them, I get a little bit nervous about. I think I have a cobalt violet in this palette that I just recently got at, because I couldn't find 
in stock, at least online, any of the ter certain purples, like kind of royally cooler, pur more bluish purples. So I just went with cobalt and I was like, okay, you know what? This isn't like super highly toxic. I'm not going to be like spray painting or anything. I'm fairly careful with all my art supplies. So that's why I ended up rolling with cobalt turquoise. Now I already um, filled them up because this was like ages ago. <laughs> I've been like, I uh, sometimes when I'm testing out, I actually test on a porcelain palette. So I will squeeze a bit on that palette. So, um, or a plate, so it's just a cheap porcelain plate from Dollarama. Um, yeah, so I've been just using the colors from there, essentially, and actually I feel like I haven't, um, I've been, like, focused on doing so much other stuff than really playing around and painting. Like, I think the finished painting of the Valkyries, like, the last, like, kind of more finished stuff, there's been so many weeks where I just kind of want to more practice, but that's, you know, I won't go on too many tangents about that. So yeah, um, if, the, um, the reason I'm also making this video is... Sometimes you like, you know, you, I believe other artists have also said this where it's just recommended you stick with a palette for a year and then see what works and what doesn't. Again, I'm not planning to toss these colors, but I'm just planning to remove them and just, you know, update it with colors I find that will be of more beneficial to me. And also I'll have to update the, this paper thing, but maybe I'll like flip it over and tape it over because it's just taped with like, yeah. Because anyway, I think I re uh, rearranged the order and took out the uh, Schminke Hordem. I keep forgetting <laughs> how to say that one for some reason or what. I keep saying SH and I want to say some other word. I don't even know what. Um, so yeah, obviously I think I want to make like a better, more organized color order because if you look at it, like, just replacing it directly there, it's probably, like, anybody, <laughs> people might be screaming, like, why would you put that there? Um, so yeah, uh, these two will be the new colors. I will rearrange all these colors to make more sense. Like, I feel like that should be closer to blues and not in the middle of purples. And yeah. So, I'll do that off camera so it's not, like, a the longest video of life. Okay, so welcome back to the chaos. I actually cut out a new thing. I have plenty of scrap papers, so that's another tip if you wanted. If you ever feel like you keep cutting out certain papers, like, you know, I always like buying large water blocks or wa large water pads, watercolor papers and other stuff. Like, I always like getting the biggest ones. That way, um, I'm not limited in size and I can always cut them down, but the thing about cutting them down is sometimes you feel like you could be wasteful. And this is how I, um, sorry, it's actually very zoomed in. Uh, uh, this is how I kind of combat that where it's just like, I, um, uh, I have this like folder where I just call paper scraps and this is where I collect all the papers. Like maybe I started a drawing, I'll leave it in here and I'll treat this as possibly like, you know, later on, maybe I'll finish it. Maybe, um, if you can tell there's like a sketch here or maybe, uh, maybe later on, I will actually, actually do something like this isn't too bad. Maybe I can be, and then, you know, wrecked painting was, was a little weird. I don't know what was going on here. It's, no plans or anything and then you know for my spider-man drawing so that's like the webbing that i cut out you know and this is fairly like this isn't just printer paper this is actually like this very lightweight kind of um drawing paper so again like there's so many papers i've just kept these are usually cuts and stuff uh over the years i've just collected and oh you know i actually go through it i've gone through a lot of my scraps like i've had scraps since university and I only started buying paper pads this year because I actually went through all of the papers because I bought like these giant sheets of like the best quality um, watercolor paper. Don't ask me why I put it up. So see, <clears throat> it's because it's stamped backwards, you can't really tell. So see, I did also experiments and when you do experiments and stuff, keep the scraps, leave them and so you know, right? So you can reference them later on. You know, this was me practicing with watercolor and inks what happens when you're kind of like mixing them or you know the colors when you're mixing what, what can they create which is kind of funny i just like bought this as a convenience color now for ink co colors just because it's a bit frustrating to remix exactly even if you drop the same three so fun fact anyway so yeah this is kind of my giant scraps folder where i do tests and also like i also like doing having these because sometimes it uh it 
critiquing them also tells me what kind of papers were great and what papers worked really well. So the Windsor and Newton one, like this is very heavyweight. I think this might be, maybe this is even 400. I'm not even sure because I think I recently bought like something 300 and it felt thinner than this. So this is one of the thickest and nicest quality papers I have ever used. But you know, um, because at the time I, I didn't have that many. This was just a very, very large sheet that I got. So I could make multiple artworks and I had multiple chunks and I think I did. I made a bunch. I'm, I believe the Galaxy Man drawing that you can find on, I, I call him the Galaxy Man, I, you know, me and naming things, is uh, with that, maybe the original Snake Lady. There might be something else like for, you know, for school that I had done. And yeah, I had this scrub plus another one where I'm like testing out uh, one of the, uh, well, the Rosa, Rosa Gallery PG-8. It's always a good idea to keep scraps. It's just very great so you don't feel like you're wasting um, more paper or anything. You're always kind of using it and it's more practical. Anyway, apologies for the rambling about my... Uh, if, well, it's a tip if, uh, if you find it useful. I'll actually swatch these colors if anybody cares. And yeah, I also forgot to mention that yes, this is not a Daniel Smith... Um, color and it's not a Daniel Smith palette. I forgot if I specifically saw cobalt teal, uh, cobalt turquoise lights. I think there's like a cobalt teal, but I'm not sure if I saw it while I was at the art store or not. Like I went through multiple different, um, like I was, I was looking constantly, so I'm not entirely sure. Okay. Yeah. Like I said, so not a full Daniel Smith palette. Um, so just, I'm not like, you know, specifically into just one brand. I've just been really liking the the, the way that uh, Daniel Smith flows. But so far, most of the professional ones I've tried, like, I've been pretty okay with. I guess it's like when you're doing like a mix of them, maybe you don't notice as much. So I will, um, so yeah, I'm not just like specifically one brand thing. So I'll start swatching them just to get an idea. And uh, yeah, my, my writing is chicken scratch. I literally just wrote this for myself. So yeah, I'll say the colors as they go along. I just figured I'd do why not like a watching thing too while I'm at it, if anybody's just interested. But yeah, so this is a little bit more chaotic video because I decided to go with slightly different format this time just for fun. Again, like, you know, this is doing it for fun. So I don't pre-spray any of the colors, by the way. This is Cobalt Turquoise Light. And I'm just using a flat brush and some water, nothing particularly special. Um, and this order, like, I kind of thought about rearranging everything for my palette, because, you know, but I actually kind of kept it mostly the same. Um, so, sorry, I don't know if you want to see all of the colors or not, but yeah, I'm just going to do it this way, because there's no point in attempting to read it. So, this next one is uh, Thalo Turquoise which is a very, very pretty color. Like, it's just a nice, darker turquoise. That's another thing when I bought this turquoise in the nap uh, maroon, is I just wanted two darker colors because I found originally I had way too many light colors and then the contrast is pretty horrible. Uh, the next color is Serpentine Green, which I actually like so much more than Sap Green just because it's got way more personality, as they say. Like. Um, um, yeah, there's just something about it. Plus, like, um, I, I can't remember where the pigment information is, but there's clearly some very cool pigments, because if, um, I'm not sure if you can tell on this one, but on this paper at least, uh, well, yeah, there we go. Uh, there's, like, teeny tiny little bits of different colors, like, popping in as it granulates and dries, so I'm not sure if this much of a heavy flow is going to be evidence there, but, yeah. And then, regular old sap green. I actually will just interchange between these. I'm not like a super nature painter, so yeah. I'm also not very neat. I kind of don't care for these to be like super neat. Like I kind of like the roughness of them. Uh, I almost kind of want them to blend together and not, so yeah. And then next to it, maybe this would be a weird, oh, let me focus, sorry about that. Uh, Next, Rose of Green. Yeah, so as I was saying, I just, 
I probably could have like rearranged this entire palette to make a lot more sense, but for now I kind of really like the way this row that you can see on camera is already, so I just slightly arranged the one half of it. Um, but oh like, you know, it's your palette, right? You can kind of rearrange it as you go along. Um, uh, I think that Roosevelt for me is a bit contaminating, but I'm so used to the color that I kind of know what it's like, so apologies if you're like thinking, well, not very... So nap, nap maroon uh, is like this very moody kind of reddish maroon, basically. Let me just, just kind of, yeah, that rose of ultramarine is very contaminated with serpentine green. <laughs> Fantastic job of like making the brush. Oh, I think I still have. Uh, then next to it we have Moon Glow, which again, like I know Moon Glow is dark, but so, for some reason because it's got so much of this like purpley moody and all kinds of um, tones to it, I didn't really count it as my darks, just because, um, yeah, I kind of like, you know, having a reddish dark, a bluish dark, kind of like, yeah, a more neutral one. And now, for my new colors, Indigo. Yeah, a little bit. Ooh, it's like this dark, inky-ish, but not like solid black color. This is like, oof. Sun makes capture instant. Oops, focus. Yeah, this is so far. It's like all these kind of make a great <laughs> kind of color combo right there. Um, um, uh, I'm trying to read the color off of the camera for some reason. Uh, Shadow Violet, yeah. This is a color I also like, don't, like, shockingly it looks like I use it a lot, but I feel like I usually just use it for Halloween, because I really like it part of like a witch's um, palette, sort of witch's outfit palette, so that's where I mostly use it, during like Halloween, and it just feels like I go through you know, uh, Moon Glow, Shadow Violet, and uh, probably the Rose of Ultramarine or something. Maybe it's a weird mix sticking that there because it's very bluish, but I kind of find maybe it'll work out just because this um, section here is, it is what it is kind of thing. Plus it's kind of brownish, it kind of is like a more of a grayish brown to me, the Shadow Violet, less violet. Um, burnt Umber is actually, I think I'm very worried here, but it's actually very dark, so. That's another thing that I really like about um, Daniel Smith paints is they're very, um, you don't necessarily have to layer them so much, it's just, I'm kind of very, um, uh, what's the word, uh, yeah, I just <laughs> end up using a lot of water sometimes when I don't intend to, so that's kind of when, you know, this gets very watered down, but like, in, yeah, there we go, see, in a normal setting when you kind of use more color, you definitely see more of the pigment, and... So it's definitely not, you know, and I don't have to brush that hard either. It's just, it, that's kind of why I like the flat brush, just because I feel like I get more paint out of it, which may, like, which maybe means like maybe I should have uh, gotten, at least for the tube paints, uh, uh, not half pans, but full pans, but yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, so yellow ochre. I didn't really say these three because they're like the three staple colors you'll probably get in every set in, you know, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and burnt umber, uh, respectively. Um, uh, to me, they're like the least exciting kind of colors. Uh, and then buff oh, oh. Okay, so <laughs> buff titanium. I'm gonna have to cut this row and flip it because I did this the last time also where I think I completely screwed that up. Uh, brilliant. I don't even know how I achieved that, but I did, so that's titanium. Yeah, okay. I just did it in complete reverse, all right. I'm brilliant, yeah, you can see, I'm sure anybody who caught that right away, there were, you could actually read this chicken scratch was probably screaming at the screen. You're such an idiot, I can't believe it. <laughs> you wrote it wrong. But again, um, I'm kind of like mixed between messy and organized, I guess, the way my workflow is. So Hansel Yellow Light, Medium, and Deep is essentially the three yellows I got here, which I think is a nice selection of yellows. I can't remember. I think this is why like, I never understand like 
very large sets when they've got like so many very very similar colors like I like it when like if it's a set it should have like all very interesting colors it's kind of why like I chose to just build my own um that's when you're starting out it's like really nice but it's also really nice to start off with a much smaller palette and I like that I did that kind of with the, at least for Daniel Smith paints um like I had a very large was it 48 set was it 48? I don't know, 36 something else. I feel like it was more than 24 colors for Windsor, Newton, Cotman. But I felt like there was definitely colors missing. Like there was no pinks in it. There was kind of like a magenta-y but more purple-y type of color. It's like Purple Lake, I think. That's what, uh, I don't know if they call it Purple Lake, but it's, a, it's definitely a Purple Lake type of color. So Pyro Scarlet. Um, I will say the only thing my palette's probably lacking is like probably just like a slightly cooler red. But then I just use, what I found is I just take the Pyro Scarlet and then I mix it with the pinks or something just to cool it down. Just cause like, um, I found this was like maybe a too orangey red but never I'm painting Spider-Man. So, uh, sorry, did give me that. Reverse direction. Now, I know I mentioned in my crazy ranting that some of these colors I don't use and probably even now, but, um, I find like they still get some use out of the thing and I figured it's been a year and a half so I just picked the colors that I most have not touched and got most frustrated with right um, like all these colors you know they don't they never really felt like they were ruining anything or making mud as they say right like you don't want muddy colors but because they were mixed with well, because these two were mixed with white they um, again very uh, that is the problem I kept finding with, uh, with with these two colors, and that's why I'm going to remove them from my main palette and just put them in my overflow palette, which is just the Rosa Gallery tin because it's like huge, so it can fit like any extras. And again, I'm not like I don't feel the need to buy a crazy amount of colors. Like if you're a collector, again for watercolors, you really enjoy that. Go for it. But like, yeah, I um. I find already the watercolor papers and everything is getting a little expensive and crazy. Yeah, so this is definitely my favorite blue so far. It's just such a gorgeous uh, blue, and I Daniel Smith just did not have a blue like that, and that's why I kind of added it. So this is like again main palette. It's not really all about Daniel Smith, it's just all about like what my main palette is and what I constantly grab and use. It's funny, um, if I'm going to, uh, if I'm going to uh, paint anywhere around the house or something, it's, or painting uh, a main image, it's going to be grabbing this palette and um, not so much any others. Uh, see, the cerulean blue is actually nice. But, but I didn't want to touch the end, so there we go. Cerulean blue is much nicer, but like it feels very kind of like a diffuse, like a pro it's probably like it's a proper sky color to be honest. So it, it's kind of what you, you see. This is like in my head what I picture in the sky, but this is more reality. So you know, fantasy versus reality is what I would characterize them as if I were going to. So I really love Dalo blues. I think they're gorgeous. I just adore the color, especially the, uh, I have the green shade. I don't know what the red shade, like how much of a difference it is, but yeah, the, the green shade is just gorgeous. This also is like my favorite. The only reason like, um, the, the only problem with it is like, even when I water it down, then it feels like it's too wishy-washy. So that's why I got like manganese, you know, but and, um, yeah. I believe best. Sorry, it keeps losing focus because I keep forgetting to put a uh, proper focus on the uh, thing. Cancel for focus. Uh, noob with my camera too, which is something I'm like slowly practicing. Um, yeah. And this ultramarine, before I realized I wasn't, wanted to swatch the yellow blue, is very nice but also i find sometimes it's just really hard like i have to dig to actually get this sort of depth to it like i pro it would probably be better like my recommendation is like if if you're thinking about tubes and just getting like the basics of ultramarine just get like a tube version i, I think that'll just like probably be better just because like it also came very uh 
pop. I don't know if you could see that. Uh, one, two, three, one. There's like a weird grab so gap in it, so it's like really dried. However, they were pouring it and like really weird. Um, I don't know how you call it, but like it <laughs> dried up and like scrunched up, I guess, compared to all the other colors. All the other colors were great. They packed them in. They overflowed the palettes, the the wells or uh, pans, pans else whatever um so they were overflowed they were nice so they were very generous with their pouring at least for this one that i got i don't know if it's even for every single one of them but it was very nice like it, it they've the, a lot of them have got a lot of wear but like even my uh quinn pink that i love using it's just yeah so i i really love this palette like it was worth it like i bought it on a sale and i'm not sure if it's like originally it was was not on sale but um, now it's like on a perma sale or something because I see the art store keeps doing this like weird gimmicky crap where it's like, oh, it's on sale. But like the sale has never gone away since it went on sale with a lot. That happened with a lot of our items. So yeah. And then cobalt blue violet, the last color. I really needed a cool purple because I felt like I kept mixing. Uh, a great mix of a cool purple actually is phthalo blue and rose of ultramarine. But uh, because I felt like I kept mixing it constantly, that's why I got like a convenient mix. Yep, yeah, so here are the final results of all the colors swatched. Um, not the most perfect swatching, uh, sorry about that. If anybody wants uh, much better swatching of like even showing how transparent they are, and very detailed stuff uh, of this palette that I've created um, specifically, leave in the comments. Otherwise, I, this is just for me. And also I will pop all the names of like the proper um, spelling and everything, just because it's a little bit hard to read, plus I did abbreviate a bunch of the names. Um, yeah, uh, again, this is just like a, a happy accumulation over, I believe, a year and a half of um, um, Daniel Smith and a couple of others paints, not a Daniel Smith exclusive palette either, because I just like it's going whatever brands. My recommendations, also, if uh, you have never gotten any professional grade paints is just stick with like some basic mixing colors where you can make a lot more so these were my three original colors that i gotten in terms of professional grade and these two daniel smith ones but yeah um do your research take a look see what you think and um yeah that's it for today and thanks for watching if you've gotten this far and listening to all my ramblings um yeah uh see you next time